Good day ladies and gentlemen, my name is Kyle Aris and today I'm going to be bringing you a game between Slayers Ryung and Slayers Frozen who's going to be spawning as the Protoss in the 12 o'clock position on Metalopolis uh, as, well, the teal Protoss in fact. Um, he likes teal because ultimately it looks like ice so it's all good. Uh, Ryung here going to be spawning as the Red Terran and uh, this is one of the games actually from the Slayers Clash of the Houses tournament. It wasn't really covered as much as it probably should have been done. Uh, uh, well, to be honest, it was one of the lesser entertaining games, um, but you know there was still some kind of some things that I wanted to point out. I'm not 100% sure if I've done kind of a tutorial video in inverted commas on this build, um, but ultimately I just wanted to kind of glance over this game and show you what is going on in the state of PVT to a certain degree. So we'll. We'll see what happens. Um, bit of an announcement, I have got a completely brand new computer on the way, which means that um, I'm going to have some a fantastic graphics card, fantastic uh, everything pretty much. Um, so that is going to help a lot in terms of being able to stream, etc. The only thing I need to do now is get a better up rate, because currently my up rate is very, very bad. It's only like one meg per second. Uh, uh, yeah, one MBS. Um, so ultimately, you know, I think you can stream with that, but it's not as good as it, you know, I really want it to be. I'm a bit of a perfectionist in that sense, so ultimately, um, if anybody has any advice on streaming, in fact, uh, on such a low kind of up rate, then please do message me. It would be very, very useful indeed. Um, but, you know, I, I really want a better up rate in order to be able to stream higher quality, so we'll have to see what goes on from there. Anyway, regardless, we do see Ryung. He is going to be throwing down that refinery at a pretty normal time, barracks at a normal time as well. And uh, back in the base off Frozen, we do have a very standard build right now. And uh, again, this this build, once again, has been, you know, popular between in PvT for a very long time. Uh, so we'll see what happens going into the late stages of this early game, etc, etc. But it's a very, very strong build that you should know if you're a Protoss player. Um, and ultimately, you know, you can get away with a lot, a lot of damage uh, depending on your positioning, so we'll have to see how that happens. Also, I have been working quite a lot on my observing skills. I do kind of still box workers quite a lot, so I do apologise for that. Um, but, you know, I'm going to try and work on that and make sure it doesn't happen too much as it is a bit um, of an annoyance. So, some people at least. So. I mean, uh, right, Frozen at this point did go for a slightly early gas. It's really not that early. A second gas assimilator does normally go down at about 22, uh, 20, etc, etc. So, you know, that's not too bad. Uh, I did skip that first zealot in order to be able to get that stalker out. A little bit of lag there. I do apologize for that. And, um, you know, it does look like we're going to have a proxy pylon from Frozen going down here. And Frozen is one of those players that isn't really that well known of on Slayer's team. Uh, he is slightly well known of if you would have watched the GSTL. But ultimately, he is a player that is sort of underrated in general, I must feel. So... He did very good in the Slayers Clash of the Houses, um, but we'll have to see what goes on from here. Uh, we do have Ryung going for that one barracks into command center, and then no doubt I'm going to be throwing down a two more barracks, which is very, very common in PvT nowadays. In fact, most uh, games nowadays for Terran, this is a very, very standard build, a very strong build. Um, so, you know, I mean, the build that Frozen is doing, as you can see, he is going to be throwing this Stargate down in a proximity position to his opponent, which is always very nice in order to be able to get those Void Rays out as quickly as possible and over to your opponent's base as quickly as possible. But ultimately, the second function of this being in a proxy position is the fact that if your opponent tries to scan in, like, an unusual position, um, say here or whatever, and, you know, it's behind the smog or anything like that, or just in general in your base, you know, it means that, you know, the, the Terran gets free intel in order to be able to what you're going to do. Because once the Terran actually knows that this kind of build is coming, it's very easy for them to shut it down. Um, they can quite easily go up to a Stargate starport very fast, get a Viking. A single Viking pretty much shuts this push down. Uh, a lot of Marines can shut it down, given the fact that the Protoss doesn't have as great micromanagement as would have normally happened. But ultimately... You know, we're going to see Ryung here have a bit of a spot of bother uh, going into this game. And, um, you know, he, he does have a lot of Marines out ultimately. And that is a proper response for such a build. And uh, two Tech Labs as well down here. So, you know, it's going to be interesting to see what does go on from here. Um, and, uh, yeah, as, again, as a Protoss player, this is a really, really strong build that you need to be able to whip out at any given time um, in response to a Protoss, uh, Terran even. So, I mean, there are two defining factors for this uh, kind of build. One, uh, the, the two major things you look for with Protoss with this build is early tech lab as a um, 
if you see an early tech club, then that's a sign potentially they're going for a lot of marauders or something that can't deal a much damage to air units, i.e. tanks, etc. Or if the Terran walls in, it's always a very good way to do this. But another thing, I mean, just as opposed to just going straight for the front here, you can do what Frozen is doing, and this is a fantastic map in order to execute this strategy on. You can use this uh, low ground to your advantage here, produce it, just get a lot of harassment here off on these units. And the main thing here, the main crutch of this tactic is this Void Ray. If this Void Ray dies, then you're in a really bad spot. So the main problem, the main thing you do with this tactic is keep that Void Ray alive. It really doesn't matter uh, too much uh, if one or two of your Stalkers do die in this position. But ultimately, if that Void Ray dies, then you're in a really bad spot as Protoss. So now, as you can see, Rune does have a very, very hard time ahead of him. He's got a lot of Marines here, but regardless, a lot of them are lower. Second Void Ray now comes in. For Frozen, he's going to be able to do a significant amount of damage here, and uh, ultimately, you know, to claim a very, very quick, easy win from the Terran. Um, now, I mean, the, the main points of this uh, tactic as a Protoss is obviously the three gateways in the main um, in order to be able to reinforce, and as you can see, we do have a lot of minerals still saved up from this push. It's really, uh, it's sort of an all-in kind of build, uh, considering how much you value the Stargate going on into the mid to late game, but ultimately you can potentially expand behind this uh, if the Terran is being greedy so much as to say, you know, going for the um, quick command center, etc. You know, so th it's not all doom and gloom if this does fail ultimately but you know I mean you've got to consider um, that the Terran could potentially push out with a very very heavy bio force into your natural if you do decide to go for this and ultimately defensive wise void rays aren't as strong as they are given in this position so ultimately you will have to factor in that aspect so yeah, regardless, thank you very much for watching this, guys. I hope you found this slightly educational. Uh, it wasn't a very entertaining game, per se, but I did want to show you this if you aren't aware of this strategy. It's sort of an old strategy now, but ultimately it's still very, very, very useful. I use it many a time against Terrans on ladder, you know, for just for quick wins, etc. Or if you do see any vulnerabilities like the bit uh, wall in or the early tech club in order to be able to, you know, exploit those vulnerabilities to their fullest potential. So... Thanks very much for watching, guys, and I'm going to do some more casks. I'm cask crazy. Bye-bye.